let's get into the word, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Sorry about this picture, I couldn't change it. My computer was misbehaving, so I could not, I could not change that. But anyway, it's it's all right. It's okay. Okay, are you ready to hear the word? So as you know, we share on declarations. So for the past two months, we've been sharing on revival, revival, revival. We've been sharing on revival. And today is the last day where we'll be sharing and teaching on the subject of revival. End time revival has been the title of our, of our messages. And we've been trying to, to break revival into pieces and explain it to, to us, each and every one of us. And I hope you've been blessed, you've been ministered to. I want to encourage you also not to, to neglect going on YouTube or Facebook, watching Bishop and many other saints, especially of our hub, sharing the word of God on this subject. Reverend, you can catch him on the Brompontaine page and listen to him. That will give you more depth in terms of understanding this particular subject. Amen. So today we want to talk about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. End time revival has to do much with the ministry of the Spirit of God. And today I just want to share with us one element of the Spirit of God, one symbol of the Spirit of God, which we have shared on before, but we want to close off this, um, this declaration in our church on, on just further trying to dig deeper into that subject, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let us read the word of God. I'll read for us so that we, we quickly move here. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, the Bible says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of the rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they appeared to them, divided tongues of fire, and one set up upon set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit go, as the Spirit gave them utterance, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused. You know, here is, the, here is the reality about the moves of the Spirit of God. The genuine moves of the Spirit of God, they have, they have an ability in them to gather multitudes. Yeah. Hallelujah, saints. Yeah. Hallelujah. When the Spirit of God moves in an environment, in a church, you do not need to follow up anyone. There is just an automatic follow-up that happens upon the lives of people. You won't hear a call from Mr. K saying, we have not seen you in church in a while. When are you coming to visit us or when are you coming to church? When the Spirit of God moves, there is a gathering. Say a gathering. Why you have not come to church? Why you have been banking here and there? It's because there is a link. There is something that is missing. The move of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, saints. Therefore, it is important for us to desire a move of the Spirit of God. I was talking to Pastor M here a couple of weeks ago. I said, I, 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 I long for the move of the Spirit of God in our church. I know I jokingly said it when I was sharing here, but you know, there were days where it's too as as Kamuga. Because the Spirit of God was moving. I long to see those days again, where the Spirit of God will move in a church and there will be a gathering. Hey, Elder was there in, in Bulawayo there, back then in the 1990s. I think some of us were born again in a time of, of revival. Because I remember the conferences that we had, the titles were Catch, Stock, and Spread the Fire. Can you say that? <laughs> Those are the times we were born again. Catch, Stock, and Spread the Fire. We were on fire for God. The church was full of the Spirit of God. Therefore, it is important that you and I, we long for the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, saints. Church is not just about you coming here and listening to Mpundis for 45 minutes 
and going home and forgetting everything that he said. You can forget what I said, but when the Spirit of God moves on your behalf, ah, the, the, the effect is permanent. It cannot change. Hallelujah. I, I was telling you that I've been born again for a, for a while now. I can assure you, I have forgotten many sermons. Many sermons. But one thing that I've not forgotten, I've been telling you, I cannot forget the moves of the Spirit of God of those days back then. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God, His moves, they are permanent. They will leave a permanent change in you. Do not hop around looking for the next classic motivational, inspirational sermon. Uh -uh. Long for the move of the Spirit of God in your life. The Spirit of God is, is the person that we should be longing for. When we come to church, our first desire should be the move of the Spirit of God. Should be that Pentecostal experience. Anytime you pray for our church, pray that God will move in our church. Hallelujah. Pray that may the Spirit of God be here daily. Every Sunday. We cannot come and gather here it cannot be. But when the Spirit of God is moving in an environment, hey, as I learned, no demon can sit quietly. Hallelujah. Anyway, I digressed. They are still reading, isn't it? I not started preaching. And they were telling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven, and when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused. Hallelujah. Can I say this? In scripture, this young child, I can't seem to. The Bible says the multitude they were drawn by the sound. <laughs> what is the sound that is at HHI Randbeck? What sound do we have as a church? Hey, I long for this particular type, for this particular dimension of a sound that gathers people, that causes people to pass by the street and they hear a sound. And they say, I, I cannot just continue. There has to be a sound. Hey, there is a sound that we need to have as a church. There is a sound that is aligned to end time revival. It is a sound that will gather Men and women. Hallelujah. What I love about this sound, this sound did not happen in the street. This sound happened where the, these guys were gathered. Devout men. Hey, the Pentecost happened when there were devout men gathered together. Hey, it scares me. That could it be that we are not seeing the moves of the Spirit of God because we are no longer devout? Hey, Ask your neighbor, are you devout? Are you a devoted man and woman of God? Hey, these guys, these guys were left. Jesus left them. The Bible says Jesus levitated. He, you know, he, he went to the heaven. And all that he left them with, I will send you another. These guys stood and sat with a promise. I, I'm sure if I was one of those guys, I would have thought, you know, a day or two will pass and then, yes, it will happen. But days passed, weeks passed. <laughs> weeks passed, and these people, they did not lose their devotedness to that promise. Hey, may we be a devoted people. May HHI Ranbeck be filled by devout men. Hey, it says devout men from every nation. These guys were not just, you know, Baba Baneni. They were coming up from Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, da 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 da. There were many of them, devout men, holding on to a promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Hey, are we a devout people? Are we a devoted church? Are we a church that can come comes here and just sings one or two songs and nothing happens and we are content with moving to the next one quick, quick? Let's see what happens after the third one. Uh -uh. When it's time for you to preach, we want to go home. But these guys, they stayed the first day. They stayed the second day. They stayed the first week. They were gathering daily in one accord, 
in one accord. They agreed. They said we will gather in that place daily. We will gather at 9 a.m. Every Sunday we are gathering. We are there. Hey, once God was convinced with the others that they are devoted, they are given, then the spirit of the living God was ushered in, was let out. Hey, may we be men and women that are devoted as a church. Do not be one that comes to church this Sunday. You come next Sunday. The third Sunday, you miss the fourth one. You come on the sixth. You come on the seventh. Uh -uh. Be devout. Come daily. Do not be one that says, I only attend the main service. Say, I want the prayer service also. Perchance, he will move in the prayer service as well. Can I tell you something, people of God? God moves in the prayer service. I know you love the main service. Because there is music, you know, these guys, they are about to be saying, the music team are singing. But in the prayer service, there is a God in there. How I pray that you will make it for the prayer service. I think it was Luma at 6 a.m. and you wake up and you say, you know what, I need to go to church. I think it was Luma. But you know what, today I need to leave early. Hallelujah, saints. The Bible says there were devout men from every nation. And the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, at, look are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians, Medes, Alamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, uh, yeah, that one, Egypt, and the parts of Libya, adjoining Syrian, Cyrene, rather, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Hey, ah, Bazalan, I've got a sermon, I've got a 17 slides, but I want, I, we will just see how things go. Listen to what the Bible tells us. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Hey, nowadays we come to church for stuff, isn't it? We come to church for breakthroughs and, and so on. But the, the divine enabling power of the Holy Spirit gave these guys the ability to speak in a completely different language. The wonderful works of God. Hey, imagine a French guy walking to HHI Randbeck, hearing us hitting his French big time. And oh, remember these guys were speaking in other tongue. They did not understand what they were saying. But these guys from other nations, they understood them. And all they had was the wonderful works of God. Hey, isn't it time that you and I begin to declare the wonderful works of God? May we put aside sometimes, yes, you need to put aside your desires and your requests. I know you need a job. I know I know maybe you need this and that. But may there be a declaring of the wonderful works of God. Isn't it amazing that the spirit, the first thing, <laughs> the first thing, the first time tongues, were said in scripture. They were not in petition. Nothing. No, no petition. It was just declaring the wonderful works of God. But I know many of us nowadays, hey, our tongues, they are shaya, shandara, 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 but in the back of your mind, there is a request, a big request. Oh, may it be that your tongues may be tongues that declare the wonderful works of Jehovah God. Hey, these people, they were shocked. They were shocked. Aren't these South Africans? How come? We know there are 11 languages, but not none of those 11 languages is French. But they are speaking French, and they are declaring the wonderful works of God. Hey, may the church of the living God be filled with men and women speaking the wonderful works of God. Oh, Mr. K, see today he is declaring how God has been good to him. Oh, my tongue is right there at that Okan corner. She is declaring how God Good God has been to him. Hey, every one of them. These guys were shocked. 
how can this be? Everyone in a different tongue, but they are declaring one thing, the wonderful works of Jehovah God. Hey, how I pray that this church will be a church that knows how to declare the wonderful works of God. These guys were, were so shocked. You know, if they had come in and they had heard the disciples say, oh, Lord, I need a car. Well, it would have been normal. Yeah, we know them. Say, about Vele Bafuni's motor, everyone needs a car. But they were shocked that men and women could gather. These men could gather to declare in a different tongue, declaring the wonderful works of God. What is it that occupies your tongue the most? <laughs> In your time of prayer, in your time of calling upon God, what occupies your tongue? Is it the declaration of the wonderful works of God? No, one of the things that I've just generally learned, is in particular from the midnight hour, is that every day in the midnight hour, we begin by thanking God. It is the thing that opens the door for you. Before you can start declaring miracles and so many things and other things, you need to declare the wonderful works of Jehovah God in your life. Amen. Hallelujah, saints. We were, we were in the script. We were, I said again, we introduction, and, but it's a figure on a piano, we introduction. Hallelujah. We hear them speaking in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Oh, may they hear you and I declaring the wonderful works of Jehovah God. Hallelujah. The book of Acts gives us a few symbols of the, of the, of the Pentecostal revival. We see the uh, rain, we see, we see wind rather to begin with, we see rain, we see wine, we see fire sitting upon the disciples and the men that were there. I have messed up my things here. But let me quickly, let me quickly explain to us some of the symbols before we get to the symbol, which is the symbol of wine, that is the, the crux of our message. I know we have taught in the days gone by about the, the fire of God and so on, but I want us to touch again on the symbol of wine. But before we get there, let's talk about the symbol of wind, the first symbol of wind. Let's see what, what this wind is. The Bible says in Acts 2, verses 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing, as, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. This symbol of the Holy Spirit speaks of the sovereignty of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit can do what he wants without restrictions. That is the thing with wind. The wind does whatever it wants. It blows wherever it goes. This shows the sovereignty of God. God is not accountable to anyone. Hallelujah. So is wind. Wind will blow to the east, to the west, north, to the south, without anyone commanding it to. Hallelujah. So is the Spirit of God. He is able to destroy the works. You see, wind is very destructive. It's okay, but there are people that experience the power of the wind. Many of us, we know of hurricanes, we know of typhoons and so on, and how destructive they can be on property. So is the wind also. It has the power in it to destroy the works of Satan. That is why we need the manifestation of the Spirit of God. You know, one, one thing that troubles me, Bazalon, I, I want to see the manifestation, the descriptive. We, wa we want to describe. These guys in Acts chapter 2 here, they are describing. Hey, I want to be able to describe a move of the Spirit of God in our church. Amen. Hallelujah. I couldn't wait. I you know there was God in church. Yeah, tell us more. What, what happened? Hey, Pastor M saying, yeah, we, we know she always sings. But, but what happened? May there be a destructive move of the Spirit of God that comes to destroy the works of Satan. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you see, is when wind blows, the, the wind, the violent wind blows, it uproots trees. Hey. When the Spirit of God moves, it has the ability to uproot things in your life that have refused to be removed. It is, when the wind blows, Bazala, it can break branches on trees. That's the power of wind is powerful. This dimension of the Spirit of God, it has power. And I think it, it, it is more, it is nice because when it happens in the house of God, some of us, you know, one of the saddest things is that in church, 
you get believers that say, Mina, well, I can't get rid of this addiction. I can't stop drinking. Well, I can try two, three days. I, after four days, I've already craving for beer is, is too much. Hallelujah. Right in church, people that are saved, people that are born again, but may you experience the move of the Spirit of God in this dimension. May it come and uproot hey, that thing that has set itself as a permanent fixture in your life. May it be uprooted in this season. Hallelujah, saints. Any one of us that is struggling with anything, may you experience this dimension of the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Number two, quickly, the symbol of rain. We find this, I believe it's in verses 17, not verses 2. It says, I shall come, it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. On all flesh, on all flesh, and you and your sons, uh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall, shall dream dreams. As against one as it is, are the sons and the daughters full of the spirit? Abo, Abo Pet, Abo Melissa, are you full of, can you prophesy? Abo Tsepo, eh? young people, the Bible says, when the spirit is poured upon you, the resulting effect is prophecy. Your young men and your young girls, they will prophesy. They will prophesy this dimension of the Spirit of God. And your old men over advance shall dream dreams. See how in. Are we dreaming dreams that are proper, that are aligned? Is God speaking to us through dreams? Hallelujah. But I love what the Bible tells us here in, in Joel chapter 2, verses 23. Be glad, ye children of HHI Randbeck. Hallelujah. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the later rain in the first month. May God give us both. You know, the Bible says, in the past I've given to you moderately. I've given it to you in that Sunday, skip the Sunday, given it to you in another Sunday. But in the days that lie ahead, God says, I will pour out my spirit. I will take the former and the new and I'll give it to you in one go. In one go. In one Sunday, you will experience that which you have experienced all the years. Hey, and I'll take that which is new and you'll experience it at one Go. And may we experience the power of the living God. May, may you more and more be poured out. May the heavens be opened, Bazala. You know, you know, have you ever heard that statement? It is Zululia Ket. It can be raining right here in Randbeck. Right here. In Cosmo, it's dry as ever. Hallelujah. May the cloud of the living God rest upon HHI Randbeck. A, may it release upon it rain. We carry it to me, Papa, and Abaga Toli, Abaga Toli revelation, but we as a church, we know the Lord can give us rain as a church. Oh, may we be them that are ready for the rain of the Spirit of God. May the rain of the Spirit be upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, saints. It's interesting. Rain chooses. If, if we are on this side of the border, the minute you cross over to the other side, it appears as though you have been driving hundreds of kilometers, but it's just a two-kilometer stretch. Even if you don't understand, you don't understand. You don't understand. Rain. We cannot be a church that is rainless. That does not experience the rain. While it's the scripture says, I will give it the former and the latter in one month. Hey, I long to see the move of the Spirit of God in this fashion, Bazalo. The former and the latter in one month. Hey, let's quickly move. May God give us rain in this season. Give us rain in this season. Number three, the symbol of fire. We have spoken about the, the symbol of fire a lot of times. What does fire do? Fire consumes. 
This dimension of the spirit of God is important in particular to us. To consume, to consume the tendencies of sin. You see, you see, one of the things that you need as a believer is that your, your propensity and your desire for sin be consumed. Your, your appetite, yes, that's the word, your appetite. Many of us, our appetite for sin is just, is just bad. It's wrong of us, Allah. Some of us, our appetite and our propensity to sin is just not right. What do you need? You need the spirit of the living God. We need this dimension of the spirit of God. The one that comes to consume. Hallelujah. Consume the appetites that are not aligned to God. Number two, fire purifies. It purifies. Only we are purifier. We are purifier. Isn't it a plus furnace? Is a purif purifying whatever, whatever. Isn't it Mr. J? In science, it purifies. It separates the gold from the from everything else, the alloys and whatnot and whatnot. Fire purifies. You need the fire of God. The only way we can see the best of who you are is for the fire of God to be your portion. Hallelujah. Unkulunkulumela kupege. Say kupega. With the issues of life, God will cook you and cook you nicely until the best of who you are is seen. That is what God did with Moses. The Bible tells who Moses is For 40 years, he was being cooked in the wilderness. Moses grew up in a palace eating nice things, drinking nice stuff. But for 40 years, God said, you know, for 40, it, it took Moses 40 years for, for all that thing just to be washed out of him, for him to be purified, for him to be truly against the Egyptians, to feel the anger of God against Egypt. 40 years. You need God to cook you. Mm. Many of us, we cry heavens. God is purifying you. God is purifying you. I know we do not like struggle. We do not like lack. We do not like suffering. But sometimes it is the sufferings of the wilderness that will cleanse us from the Egyptian system. The Bible says, well, if he was there, eh? Moses had never seen anything. But without really burning. Hallelujah. You need to be, you need to be cleansed to the point that your spiritual eyes can begin to see. Hallelujah. 40 years. I pray it doesn't take you 40 years. Because unless Ubu Egyptian is washed from you, you are, you are, you are not going anywhere. Enkangala <laughs> konalap. The Enkangala Bazalwan. Egypt. In the wilderness, rather. But the reality is this fire will purify you. I, I, I am reminded of Bishop Simon. Uh, what does that sermon say? The test, the, the test, the many tests of God. Uh, you've got wilderness test, the, all those tests. I go look for them on YouTube. They are there. Fire is a symbol of judgment also. Fire is a symbol of judgment. You need to pronounce judgment on everything that is not of God in your life. Pronounce judgment on it. Hallelujah. And number four, which is the subject of our sermon today. In the next 15 minutes, we will be done. Hallelujah. The symbol of wine. I, but I know, but Alana, we have taught on the wedding of Kana. And we have prayed on the main issues of wine. It's not that I am given to wine, isn't it? <laughs> Don't think that. Because why is he so obsessed with wine? Sunday in, Sunday out, we learn to buy wine. I am obsessed with the wine of the Holy Spirit. I want to see the wine of the Holy Spirit manifesting in our lives. Hallelujah. In verses 13 of Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, Others mockingly said they are full of wine. These guys, whatever they were doing, whatever they were saying, it made them appear as men that were full of wine. Hallelujah. It made them appear as men that were full of wine. Yes, indeed, they were full of wine. But the wine that they were full of was different from the wine that these guys thought were full of. Hallelujah. 
Let me just recap here so, uh, the, 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 the scripture that we have looked at in the past. John chapter 2, verses 7. The Bible says, fill the water pots with water and they fill them. And in verses 10, the Bible tells us that every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Until now. Hallelujah. One thing that I, I, I pray and I cry out for is that we as a church will step into the dimension of being able to serve wine. Hallelujah. When men come here, may they find wine. When men come to our church, may they find wine. Say wine, Bazalwan. Mm. In a wedding, we don't drink water. In a wedding, Gokupuzwa, a wine. Imagine a situation in the wedding of Kana, wine has run out, and the master of ceremony comes out and says, okay, guys, the wine is finished. Now we're going to start drinking water. All right. Water for everyone. What you would have seen there is that each and everyone would have started leaving, going ta, 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 ta. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen what happens in, 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 in weddings where there is no alcohol? Have you ever seen what happens? Somehow you will find alcohol. The couple who are getting married, they have declared, we don't drink, we are Christians, therefore there will not be alcohol here. And you are allowed to do that. But I can guarantee you, somehow he will smuggle in his crate. Hey! How can we have a wedding without wine? How can we have a church without wine? How come? Hey, may God help us. May God help us. We cannot be content with a church as a church that serves water. Hey, I pray that as a church we will be transformed. Hey, may God transform you and me. The Bible says, he said, fill the water pots with water. And once he had filled the water pots, the water was turned into wine. It is time God turns us. Turns the ministry of HHI Randbeck from just being an ordinary church that serves ordinary water that people can get on the water tape. But may you get wine in the name of Jesus. People are tired of wine. Yes, we are, they are tired of water. I can't tell them a man. They go in my posture and they get water and it doesn't work for them. With water. But we are here to say, as HHI ran back, we are given to the ministry of serving wine of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I want you to read this thing. I want us to read this, this, this vision, this vision of HHI. To reach out to the lost, lonely, and wounded rejected, sick, and dying to restore them to Jesus, to administer holistic healing. Hallelujah. Spirit, soul, and body, and to witness the transformation of community, cities, nations by the reviving power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, hey, he is the person of this house, of this apostolic house. As HHI ran back, it is time that the reviving power of the Holy Spirit is experienced. For everyone that comes in here. Hey, may it be that by reason of this thing, may the lost, may they find their way when they come here. By reason of the Holy Ghost. May the wounded, may they be healed. Oh, I love, I love, I love it when the Bible says, when Paul talks to, to Timothy, he says, I, am Panami. I know you have a traveling stomach. And stop drinking water alone. Hey, it is time that you drink a little bit of wine. Hallelujah. May it be that as HHI run back, we will begin to serve people wine. They come, Fundis have got a back ailment. Here is a bit of wine. I have a stomach ailment. Here is a bit of wine. May no one come to HHI run back and live the same. Why? Because we have got the reviving power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, saints. As a church, we need the Spirit of God. I pray that this hunger and this desire will rest upon you. Until we see these things happening. How can we restore the dying? How can the sick be healed? Hallelujah. How can we administer holistic healing? Hallelujah. How can we 
witness to people without the reviving power of the Holy Spirit. As a church, we need him. Hey, Razalon. Hey, we need him. We need him. We need the spirit of the living God. We need the wine. Hey. We are Timothy's. It was a Timothy. Timothy's. That have been drinking water. Thinking that water will make them well. Oh, but I am here to say to you, Timothy, it is time that you change whatever you are drinking. It is time for you to drink a little bit of wine. Hey, it is time that you sip a bit of wine. I know people who are not saved, they say, I will trust naughty wine anyway now. Stop thinking with your carnal mind. The wine that is spoken of is the wine of the spirit. Hallelujah, Zen. Hey. We need to drink the wine of the spirit. We know. 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 We the wine that we need is the wine of the Spirit of God. The wine of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. May wine be something that is served continuously on this altar, on this church, in this temple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us quickly, let us quickly go here and look at how wine is generally developed. Let us quickly, in two seconds, the development of wine, how wine is developed. The development of wine involves a couple of steps. These are generic steps. Generic steps. Uh, they are not the prescribed. I, 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 I am not a, I did not research how wine is made. I just figured out this is, this. I've been told this wine comes from grapes. So I figured out uh, grapes. Okay, grapes come from somewhere. They come from a vine and so on. But they are the steps anyway. If you are one who is in need of wine, HHI run beggar, there is this thing called a vineyard. Say a vineyard with me. Listen, when Noah, Noah, Noah has, has been in the, in the boat for many days, now the boat has rested on the mountains of Ararat and, and all that, and he comes out, and the Bible tells us in verses 20 of Genesis chapter 9, that Noah, now Noah, a man of the soil, Hey, that, that phrase, men of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. Hey, he proceeded. Noah could have planted anything, but he proceeded to plant a vineyard because he wanted wine. Hey, hey, hey. Ubabu Noah. You know, Noah had the privilege of sitting as, the, as, as Adam at one point in time because the covenant that God makes with Noah is exactly the same thing that he did with Adam. The first man, we can say, after the destruction of the whole world, he plants a vineyard because he understood that he cannot live without this thing called wine. Hey, child of God, it is time that you and I cultivate an environment that will encourage the production of wine. Amen. Hallelujah. It is time that you and I, like Noah, go back to our homes and we plant a vineyard and say, in this house, we need to be them that are given to the wine of the Holy Spirit. Cultivate an environment where the Spirit of God can be brewed, where the Spirit of God can move. It has to come from grapes. Grapes have to come from a vineyard. Hallelujah. Number two, a vineyard needs to be tendered. It needs to be taken care of. From, from what I know, it is not child's play to take care of, 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 of these trees. It is not child's play. It is like taking care of a believer. Eh? During the days of Solomon, uh, actually, let's read John chapter 15, verses 1 to 2. The Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, every branch of mine that bears no grapes, he cuts it and takes it away. So that, so that, so that it may bear more fruit. Hallelujah. You need to tender, you need to be on the lookout, you need to check what are the things that are affecting your ability to have the Spirit of God move in your house. 
Some of us, Bazalana, it's simple things. You need to cut off, say cut off. You need to cut off certain things in your home. Hallelujah. Cut off certain television shows in your home. Cut off certain conduct in your home. Some of us, we pray at midnight. We pray on Thursday and so on. But somehow, the fruit that is coming out is not as much. Hey, could it be that there is something that needs to be cut off? Hey, may God cut off. May you have the insight to see what needs to be cut off for you to bear much fruit in your house, in your vine. Hallelujah. In your vineyard. Hallelujah. Then there's the step of harvesting the grapes. Hallelujah. Harvesting the grapes. Squeezing the grapes. Hey, there's a book by a certain man of God. What is it? Crushing something, something. Crushing. Hey, nothing comes, Bazalana, without some crushing, isn't it? For the grapes to release the juice, the grape juice, they are going to under a figure restaurant to want some grape tizer. There is a grape that has been crushed for it. Oh, may it be that God will crush you to one of these days. Will crush you so that you are able to release the juice of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 The need for wine. Let me, let me show you why in this time and age we need wine. Why we need so much wine. The Bible says in Isaiah 24 verses 11, there is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened and the mirth, the mirth of the land, the joy of the land is gone. Hallelujah. There is a cry for the spirit of the living God out there. There is a need. Our churches need the spirit of the living God. The world is in need of the spirit of God. The Bible tells us of a dark time in Israel here. They desired wine, but there was no wine. In the streets, they cried out for wine. There was nothing. Hallelujah. There was nothing. Wine it is time that the world begins to know and understand that wine can only be found here in church. The real wine, the true wine is found in the house of the living God. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. Listen to Proverbs 31, verses 6. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing. Hey, we are, we, we are being told to the one that is dying, give him strong drink. Give him wine, he will be fine. That is exactly what Isaiah 61 is telling us there. Hallelujah. Will it be that when someone who is perishing comes into your life, comes into your home, comes into your circle, what will you offer them? Do you have water? Water will not serve them. The Bible says the one who is perishing is in need of strong drink. Hallelujah. And wine for the bitter soul. The wine has a tendency to make someone merry, isn't it? It makes someone merry. Oh, yes, the bitter. Hallelujah. Do you have something that is aligned to bitterness there? I'm sure it is. Someone, someone. But anyway, the bitter. May they come to church and may they experience the wine of the Spirit of God. Let him drink and forget the, his poverty, verse 7, and remember his misery no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need the wine of the Spirit of God. We live in a very difficult time. Can I tell you something, saints? News, something new that you have never heard anyway. I am the first one to say it. Here it comes. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Can I digress? Jesus is coming. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is coming. You know, People have a tendency to think that ah, life just happens. Right now, right now, we have got a, a Ukraine-Russia system is, is situation there. Russia has chosen to go and invade Ukraine. Something that is taboo, something that is something that no one ever thought it would be possible. The Bible says there will be rumors of war. There will be pandemics. And the COVID very corner. Yeah. Oh, it's still there. Some of us we are celebrating with this punyugi COVID. We are still here. But the, the clock is ticking. Tick, 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 tick. Now the rumors of war are ticking. Tick. A rumor of war in Europe. Tick, tick. 
And here is the scary thing. Here is the scary thing about the situation in Europe. Right there, a small country is being fought by a big country, and no one keeps quiet. All right? Here is the situation. We are here in SA. You and I, I know many of us, we are, we are, we are from the land of the north. Uh -huh. If the South African government can choose to say, every Zimbabwe and Kopek home right now, right now, I can assure you, no one in the world will stand up and say what you are doing is not fair, is not right. No one will stop South Africa. Do you know that? In as much as no one, right, the most powerful forces in the world, or America, or UK, and what, 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 what they are all, they are all looking out for their own interests instead of defending the small guy. They are shields there. Jesus is coming. Hey, child of God, Jesus is coming. I was watching the news the other day, and I heard on the news the, uh, the, the, the police officer there who is giving the news is saying, yeah, we recovered firearms and so much, so much, uh, 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 you know, describing all the types of firearms. And the perpetrators that were arrested were, were unfortunately, Zimbabweans. <laughs> he worried about that rhetoric. Zimbabwean with firearms. Zimbabwean roping someone. A Zimbabwean doing that. A Zimbabwean this. The rhetoric can spread like wildfire. Remember, a Zimbabwean that is caught doing something wrong is a representative of the big Damas. Jesus is coming again. When I heard that, that thing troubled me. It's as if we are human to So, I felt, I felt bad. Hey, we are bad. And I know there are Zimbabweans that, that are doing all sorts of bad things out there, all cruel things, doing all sorts of things. And they deserve to be punished. But it's so sad because the rhetoric is for Zimbabweans. It's not for criminals, it's for Zimbabweans. For the first time, I was shook up a little bit. I got, huh? Yeah. 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 Amen. We need wine. 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 But Jesus is coming again. Do not ignore these rumors. Jesus is coming again. You will be found in a beer hall. Jesus is coming, Bazalonis. You know, he, he, let me tell you what uh, <coughs> Bishop Doug says in one of his books. He says, if you had asked Diana the night where she was with her boyfriend, what time is it, or the morning of it, she would have said, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm just preparing to, to meet up with my Egyptian boyfriend. You know, we're going we're gonna to have some fun tonight. But in her clock, the real clock, was saying you are left with 12 hours before you meet your maker. What? At what time is it in God's prophetic clock? Go and listen to Bishop's message, God's prophetic calendar. Where are we? You know, besides the prophetic calendar of God, there is your own clock. What time is it? It's 20 to 12. But the real time is somewhere. It is only known by him who is in heaven. Hey, may it be that you and I, we will not see, we will seize this thing of leaving the house of God, ignoring some of these warnings. When COVID was hitting here, all of us we were praying left, right, and center. I see everything has gone down. You think the war in Ukraine is affecting Ukrainians? It's a rumor of war. That should be a message to the whole world. I'm glad it is not happening here. I'm glad it is not happening back home. But it's a rumor of war that should be a noise in your ear that says Jesus is coming again. What are you doing right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us move on. Let's talk about in the wine. Eat and drink for tomorrow you die. Doesn't, that, doesn't, doesn't the Bible say that? Number one, what does wine speak of? Wine speaks of the strict influences of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Wine speaks of the sweet influences of the Holy Spirit. May bitterness leave us by reason of the outpouring of the new wine. Hallelujah. There are so many reasons why we can be bitter, why we can be sorrowful, why we can be them that, you know, are, are so worried about everything and anything. But may it be that by reason of wine, you and I will experience the sweet influences of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One other key component that I want you to appreciate and understand. Listen to what Mark chapter 2, verses 22 says. It says, no one pours out new wine into old wine skins. No one pours new wine into old wine skins. If it does, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. Instead, new wine is poured into new wine skins. Hallelujah. Let's talk about skins. You know where skin comes from? The skin that was, that made the, 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 where the wine was poured came from some animal, from some poor animal. <laughs> from some, an animal had to die. Hallelujah. It had to die. And its skin had to be used to, to inhabit. Why? Hallelujah. You and I, I, are you, do you want the wine of the Spirit of God in your life? Many of us, the answer will be yes. But are you willing to die? Hey, what a scary thought. We can only be them that are given to being possessors, to, to them that are able to carry the new wine. If we are new wine skins, do you, do you know what it means to say new wine skin? He says you are fresh, you are a fresh one, you are the fresh skin, the fresh one that just died recently. You are the one that has just been skinned recently. Are you willing to let go of your own life so that you become a vessel of the Holy Spirit? Wine, wine. You cannot be a vessel of the spirit of the living God unless you are dead to yourself. A skin is a skin, Bazalan. It does not have blood, nothing. It has been dried. It's nothing. It's gone. It has, it has given up its livelihood. It's life for the sake of the wine. Are you and I willing to give up our livelihood, who, who we are, the most valuable, precious things about ourselves, so that we can be them that can be, that can be filled by the Spirit of God. We love to declare, we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. I have news for you. You can only be the temple of the Spirit of God if you are one who is a wine skin, a skin. Hey, I hope you are hearing me. A skin has no life. It has rejected everything. It, 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 it's a nobody. It's just. As a matter of fact, you find a lot of wine skins there. You cannot even recognize whether this one is a goat, this one was a sheep, or this one was a cow. They are all given to one thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are just saying, you know what? I'll just be a wine skin. I, that's, who, that's who I am going to be for the sake of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May you May you deny yourself. You know what the Bible says? If you do not deny yourself, he will deny you in heaven, isn't it? Hallelujah. But I want us to stand up and pray today. I won't go through everything. I want us to, to stand up and pray. Rise up, let's pray. For two seconds, Jay. This issue of wine, we need to be a church.